Welcome everyone to a beautiful day in North Georgia. We're at Road Atlanta for round two of the Moto America, the AMA FIM North American Superbike Championship. Hi everyone, I'm Greg White standing alongside Jason Pridmore, multi-time AMA and FIM World Endurance Champion. And we are getting ready for an amazing day of racing. We kick things off with Super Pole number one in the Superbike class. Yeah, Super Pole number one is gonna be ultra competitive today. So everybody that was in the top 10, Greg, after the first three practice sessions are all moving on to qualifying number two. But from 11th place all the way down the field, qualifying number one, and we're gonna take two out of that session and they're gonna bump up to the guys in qualifying two. And this coverage today is only the beginning of what we have going on this weekend. Tomorrow morning, you can tune in at 5.55 a.m. We kick off World Superbike coverage. Then at noon, it's race number one of the Superbike class right here for Moto America at 4.30 p.m. East. We kick two and a half hours of coverage off with Super Stock 600 and Super Sport race number two, followed by Superbike race number two. It's going to be fun, it's going to be exciting, and it's all right here at Road Atlanta. Now, for more about what's going on in the hot pit lane, here's the third member of our broadcast team. It's Christy Lee. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. I'll be down here during all of the events throughout this weekend on Hot Pit, bringing you the inside stories from the riders and the crews. Now, this weekend, there are a handful of riders in both Superbike and Superstock who have not turned any laps at all around this track, including the number 24 of Tony Elias. When I talked to Tony earlier, he said he still feels like he's struggling to get up to pace despite setting the third fastest lap time during the final practice session for Superbike. Greg? Thanks, Christy. Really appreciate that. That's going to be exciting to hear about, Jason. No question about it. Absolutely. Well, a good look at Road Atlanta, but how about the double zero? Josh Day with a huge high side. He was up and okay. Look at this as he sends himself to the moon. That was in free practice number three earlier today. He got up and walked away from that. One of the most violent crashes I've seen, Greg, and the way his head slammed to the ground like that. I'm just so thankful to see him get up. We both sat here. We couldn't believe that he just jumped up the way he did. So Josh Day on the double zero. We'll see if he's able to get up and get going. But we're going to take a break here on BN Sports. Stay with us when we come back. Super Pole qualifying number one. So welcome everyone to Road Atlanta in Brazelton, Georgia. I'm Greg White with Jason Pridmore. And making it all happen down on pit lane is Christy Lee. And we are at the Moto America Suzuki Superbike Shootout of Georgia. Round two of nine for the 2016 championship. Moto America, the premier AMA FIM North American Superbike Championship. Road Atlanta, two and a half miles long, five lefts. Seven rights, up and down, and blind corners, and very challenging, Jason. It's got everything. This is such an iconic circuit. We've seen some changes over the years. The old gravity cavity used to be something that everybody talked about. We changed that uh, in the early 2000s to try to make it a little bit safer. Some of the S's, we've had to change some things there as we look at Chris Ulrich getting ready to go out for Super Bowl one here. But yeah, they've definitely changed some things here at Road Atlanta over the years, and it's just a favorite of the fans and obviously of the riders also. Chris Ulrich, the number 18 Superbike on the M4 Suzuki, GSXR 1000. And there's a look at 33 Kyle Wyman, who was uh, inadvertently involved in a huge red flag in race number one last weekend in round number one. They seem to have gotten that motor back together and everything is squared away. 68 degrees and sunny for this one with the wind blowing in a lot of different directions. Yeah, it's blustery here, but I talked to Kyle Wyman this morning about that issue and you know, I think his main thing was worrying about you know, all of his fellow riders and, and I, I made a comment to him that I thought it was good of him to kind of the corner workers know, hey, we have a big problem back there. We're now we're on screen. We're looking at Jake Gagne. Thomas Puerta is uh, on the Shivey Racing BMW this weekend. Most of us remember Steve Ratt being on that bike last week. So Thomas is here riding that BMW this weekend. He's been doing some racing on a BMW at home. So uh, it's something that'll be a little bit familiar to him. Jake Gagne on that Broaster Chicken. Yamaha had some trouble last week. They actually put a brand new shock in that motorcycle and it didn't work, it actually broke. So Gagne had a miserable race too. And for him not to get into the top 10 was a bit shocking. 
Again, Super Pole 1, Super Pole 2, situation that we're in right now, has 10 riders already qualified to go in it. So this Super Bike, Super Pole number 1, the top two riders will transfer to Super Pole 2, and they get qualifiers. And I think you said it the best as we're looking at Jake here. Jake has had an incredible offseason. Oh, we got a bike down. It looks like uh, Kaczynski, I believe. And it looks like he's come down the hill. Um, yeah, it looks like he's come down the hill going into the last corner. Yeah, talk about quarterly racing. Just a moment ago, that is Dale Quarterly. His team out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is Anthony Kaczynski. So Kaczynski down and out early with less than you know, just about three minutes. A red flag out. So we're going to have stoppage right now as Kaczynski takes a look at his right hand. Oh, and he got together with another rider, it looks like, there as he came up over the top of the hill. For those, those looking, you can tell he's very frustrated. Something happened there in front of him. We have a red flag for that situation. But when you come up over the top of that hill, it's blind, Greg. You can't see up over the top. So we don't see very many incidents there, and hopefully we don't see very many more. Uh, but it looks like his bike is parked up against the wall, and these two guys are still on a, on a bit of a lap. So you're going to see them put their arms up here in a minute as they're going to come up to this red flag situation. So red flags waving as the 603 bike goes down. You're looking at live pictures here from Road Atlanta. Uh, we got, uh, well, just about uh, a couple minutes and a couple seconds worth of Super Bowl qualifying number one uh, going. And then there was an incident, it looked like, between Johnny Rock Page and the 603 of Anthony Kaczynski, and we're under red flag conditions. So that gives us an opportunity to get down to Christy Lee with more. Well, I was just going to grab David Anthony quickly as the bikes get ready to go back out for Super Bowl. Maybe we can catch up with him a little bit later, Greg. Perfect. perfect. Thank you so much, Christy. Yeah, that's those moments when you're down there in pit lane and the rider says, yeah, I get a moment to talk, and then all of a sudden they go, <laughs> they got to go, the go racing. Out. Yeah, time to go. And so you, you can see Gagne again is right up at the front of the line. He wants to get out there, get some clear track, get as good a lap as he possibly can, see, kind of evaluate the bike. I'm sure he's made some changes. You heard he said he's been having a tough weekend, and look who's chasing him out. So these two guys were teammates for a long time on the Red Bull factory team, if you remember from a yeah. few years back. And now Thomas and Jake probably have uh, a good friendship. So now it's Jake saying, all right, tag on the back of me. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can get through to Super Pole 2. Tommy Puerta on the 12, filling in for, well, he's actually entered in the Superbike class. That's a motorcycle that uh, Steve Rapp rode, and he will be in the Superstock class. Jake Gagne, of course, last year the Superstock 1000 champion. 13 wins and 13 podiums, so if he didn't win, he wasn't even on the box. That's how talented the 32 is. Yeah, the guy right behind them is who Christy was actually going to talk to just now, David Anthony. He's come from riding the Suzuki 600 last year. He's been riding thousands in the past. He rode for John Orch's team last year on a 600, and now he's going to be riding on this DX10. And uh, his teammate Bobby Fong, they were so close. I was talking to both of them today. He's only 0.3 off the pole in Superstock, and he's having to go to qualifying one today. So he is also trying to get on the back of these two guys. I would expect if he creates just a little bit of a gap, like maybe a second, second and a half a gap. This is something we've seen the Haydens do a lot over the years. Let these two guys just get it just enough in front of him where he can get a toe, but not balk him doing his lap. 2016 Kawasaki ZX-10 are different from the 15 model. So the latest motorsports team that David Anthony, the 25, that's the white and green bike there, third one in your screen just behind Jake Gagne. They're working the kinks out of that motorcycle, and if you really look at these fantastic pictures we're providing, take a look at the front end of Jake Gagne's motorcycle as well as David Anthony's, and you'll see a little bit of what we call in motorcycle racing front end chatter. Yeah, he's been having that this week. We've seen that a little bit out of Jake's bike, and you can see how active the riders have to get with this first part. Now where this is all straight downhill, this is an off-camber right-hander. By this point now, you're, you're full throttle, third or fourth gear. You do one back shift here into turn five. Gagne's on a fast lap. You can see him pulling away from the other two guys a little bit. So this is what he's doing. He made an adjustment, and that's why he wanted to get out first to see if this works. So imagine if you're sitting at home, you're leaving your garage, Within two minutes or 30 seconds, you're already doing 100 plus mile an hour on the freeway. <laughs> That's exa essentially what he's doing. And you can see he's still fighting that bike. When he was coming out of turn one very early in this lap, there was a lot of movement, Greg. We can see that. And, and we're still seeing it out of the 32 right now. Dunlop tire, the control tire here in the Moto America series. So all competitors on Dunlop tires. And Superbikes and Superstock 1000, they run slick tires. So no grooves in them. A lot different from your street motorcycle or even your car, and that's for maximum traction. So Jake Gagne, the 32, one rider we definitely expect to be at the top of this board and transfer into Super Pole number two, is coming down after coming out of the pits, and this will start the first flying lap. 
for the Broaster Chicken Yamaha Rider. Yeah, he just uh, went through right now at a 27.4. So just to put it in perspective, this morning in free practice three, we saw riders in the low 25s. Mm -hmm. So he's still a little bit off, and we'll see if he can improve here on his second flyer. As David Anthony did move up to second, getting a toe off of Thomas Puerta. So, but I, I, I think this will be a little bit cleaner lap. I think this will be a faster lap for Gagne. Uh, already, it looks a little bit quicker to me just as we see now where he's coming into now, turn five, out of this turn, it's blind, but it's up over the top of a hill. You can see him already making adjustments with his body. This lap looks a lot cleaner to me so far, Greg. This is turn six now. This has a little bit of bank to it, and it's gonna lead onto the slowest turn on the track, uh, turn seven, but it's the, the most important because it's gonna lead onto this big, long back straightaway. Now, as he comes out of this, this turn here, you can see the bike moving around. He's gonna go up over a rise here. This is blind too, but you're not concerned as a rider because it's, a, it's on a big, long straight. But coming down into this turn here, this will definitely test you. This is flat out, six gear on a super bike doing over 180 mile an hour. Yeah, and it's fun. It, it is, is a fun. lot of fun. A lot of fun, and they come straight down in this big braking zone as we look at Thomas Puerta right now. So Tommy Puerta on the 12. Sitting in fourth position after that first lap. Filling in it, not an easy thing to do. Just jump on a BMW S1000RR and come to Road Atlanta and make it work. But Tommy Puerta also going after that position. It's, oh, right, some right, one rider ran straight down the hill and they're gonna be coming through this pit section as Jake Gagne goes 126.917. So Gagne stays at the top of the leaderboard and then local rider Jeff May on the 99 is in second position right now at a 27.502. Jeff May running is basically his own effort as Tommy Puerta is moves up into third over David Anthony, Hayden Gillum in fifth, Chris Ulrich in sixth, Billy Etheridge in seventh, Barrett Long eighth, Hayden Schultz in ninth, and Ryan Jones rounding out your top 10. Here's a look at Jeff and, you know, I know Jeff a little bit and it's great to see him here on his, basically his own bike. It's uh, something that he's put together for, for uh, Road Atlanta here. I'd heard that he was doing it. I got I really do got to get down there and chat with him. Jeff's been struggling to find a ride ever since the Buell Racing Team went uh, underneath uh, over at World Superbike. So he's such a talented rider, such a talented guy, and uh, he's jumped on this bike this weekend and done an incredible job uh, considering he's he just basically just started getting on this thing. So Jeff May on the Project May Day TTR bike right there. A little wave at Chris Orch as May looks over his shoulder. May went and competed in the Daytona 200 earlier this season and finished second in the Daytona 200 behind uh, the famed Michael Barnes. That was on a 600 now, the Daytona 200 running on 600s now on this fiery Kawasaki ZX-10R. And what generally happens, Greg, is guys are gonna go out and do two laps. They're gonna go out and get two good laps. And I think Jeff's gonna come in. Yeah, you can see Jeff coming in. I saw Chris coming in. I've seen Jake Gagne come in. Track's gonna get a little bit quiet. These guys are gonna come in, make any other adjustments they think they might need to make, throw a new rear tire on there and try to get themselves up the board a little bit more. Looking at these first two guys, looking at Gagne, he's got three tenths over Jeff right now. Next guy behind them is Hayden Gillum. So he's a full over half a second quicker than him. So Jake can either decide to sit there, but I think he's probably gonna end up going back out only because I think he's still working on some setup stuff and, uh, and then move forward from there. You can see the upper left part of your screen is the time that remains in this Super Bowl number one session. And right now it looks like Jake Gagne and Jeff May will be the riders to transfer into Super Bowl number two, where they're gonna get an opportunity to run the one lap Dunlop qualifying tire. Jason, we talk about qualifying tires. It's called the Q. It's something that Dunlop and Moto America decided to bring back into the series. And yes. what is a Q all about? Well, qualifying tire is a, is a tire that is going to be used for one lap. And when you leave pit lane, you go very quietly for probably three quarters of the lap because it's so soft that you don't want to ruin the tire. So when you come across start finish line for your first flying lap on that tire, you're only going to get one shot at it. As you see Kyle Wyman ducking into the pits here, uh, you're going to get one shot on this tire and that's all you're going to get. And it, basically the way I look at it is during the course of the weekend, the way I rode my motorcycle uh, changes completely when I put a qualifying tire on because I have so much grip, but I've got one shot at it. So I can get on the gas a little bit earlier everywhere. The reason why I was no good on a qualifying tire is I used to move all my brake marking 
markers up, and it was the wrong way to look at it. I was never <laughs> very good at it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I learned later on in my career that, hey, I got a rear tire on here that's got a lot of grip, and I need to utilize that, not so much getting into the corners oh, faster right. on the front. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I got better at that as, 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 as the years went on. So some of the top riders in this session are in for a new tire to try to go a little bit quicker. As Jake Gagne and Jeff May sit on the bubble right now, transferring to Super Pole number two. Some of the biggest names in the sport, of course, are in Super Pole number two. Loving looking at Hayden Gillum. So yeah. Hayden Gillum's got a great little marketing tool that he's got. He's the man in the van with a plan. That's his whole thing this year. He's with the Bonnier Group. Uh, he's on the Suzuki GSX-R 1000. And right now he is uh, on our board on a pretty good lap right now. He's only three tenths out of that second spot. And uh, as he was headed down that back straight, we will have a look and see his time. But right now he's on his personal best lap. Now we're looking at the guy who is in second in the session, Jeff May, rolling out of pit lane. And you can see he's in his old leathers. So I'm sure if he gets a good weekend going, here's Hayden coming into the last final turn. Wow. Not scared. You think he dirt tracks? Yeah, a little bit, a little, a little bit. bit. He's so, from Kentucky. He's and, uh, right around that Hayden family. So. That, that lap does not move him forward. It moves him really close. 27.262 is Jeff May. At 27.298 is Hayden Gillum. So he might have one more shot at this, and we'll see if he can get going a little bit quicker. Might have a little traffic in front of him. That can help you, and that can hurt you here. Oof. It looks like it could be Dave Anthony in front of him, so that's not going to hurt him. Dave is going to be pulling out there, uh, and so that'll be great for Hayden having a little bit of a, a toe. Here you can see he's coming down to the last turn. What you can't see on TV is how steep that is coming down yeah. that hill, and Hayden had that thing on the nose, and the bike was just moving around a lot, but he got a great drive out of there and he was so close at the top of the hill though the rear tire dropped off the edge of the racetrack and into a bit of a hole and he had some dirt on the back tire so we'll see if that slows him down at all Hayden Gillum the 169 on the cycle world Suzuki right now he's the rider trying to get Jeff May because those top two transfer with less than uh, three and a quarter minutes remaining in this session Heads down behind the bubble, trying to be as aerodynamic as possible, get the most speed out of that motorcycle. There's the 25 of David Anthony from Australia on the Superstock 1000 machine. Anthony right now in fourth spot, trying to put down that solid lap time, being chased by the 169. Now, not to confuse anybody, but in this particular session, we don't have qualifiers. So when we, mm -hmm. when you hear Greg and I say they're trying to put down that lap, they're just basically on race rubber right now. They've got to go out there and do the best possible lap they can on tires that they're used to racing on. So they can actually work on some setup. If Jake Gagne decided to go back out this session, he could work on some race setup. And uh, it, it, but, but for right now, there's no qualifiers in this. So these guys are going to get two or three laps on a, probably a soft or uh, something that they feel comfortable on to go fast. So that's why you're seeing these guys do so many laps. I didn't want to sound contradictory to say it was just <laughs> one lap on a qualifier. Hayden Gillum trying everything he can. He might be in a pretty good position right now coming out of turn five. If he can latch onto the back of Anthony right at the right spot, it may propel him into a faster lap than Jeff May as Jake Gagne remains in the pit sitting on the 26.917 in position number one. But it's made a 27.262 to a 27.298 for Gillum. So oh, very small margin, 0 0.036 separate the transfer into Super Bowl number two where they get to ride with Bobier Hayes Elias, Hayden, Heron, Knapp, Fong, Eslick, Corti, and Sheridan Marias. So air goes Gagne now with 140 left. He's got a boogie. If he's going to take the checkered flag or get out there before the checkered flag, he's got to do a ripper of a lap just to get to the start finish line or else he's going to run out of time to do a flying lap. And it doesn't look like he's in that much of a hurry. No, and Jeff May just improved by a tenth. But these two, David Anthony and Peyton Gillum, those are who I'm kind of waiting for to come back through as we look at Gagne trying to get out and get around on that lap. But those other two are, are still trying to jump up there and get, get into a, a, a qualifying spot. But right now, they're both just a little bit off still. So if it ended right this second, Gagne and May are your two guys. And if Anthony and Hayden don't hold each other up too much, they might get one more good flying lap. But Gagne probably felt, A, he wanted to work on something, or B, there's three guys right now that might get a little close to him, so he wanted to go out and protect his position. Less than a minute remains in this session. Jake Gagne coming down the back straightaway here at Road Atlanta, trying desperately to get to start finish line before time expires so he can put another lap in, even though he's comfortably sitting at the top of the leaderboard, 0.255. And there is Danny Eslick. So Danny Eslick, who is in the eighth position waiting for Super Pole number two. He's safely in that on the TOBC racing machine. So here we go. This is it. 
It's Jake Gagne and Jeff May right now. They're the ones that get to transfer. It's Hayden Gillum, Kyle Wyman in fourth, and David Anthony in fifth. Jeff May's on another good lap here, so this could be a lap that's just going to help solidify his standings a little bit. Looking at the screen, I'm not seeing a lot of green from anybody else. So all Jeff's doing right now is making his situation to get into the next stage of this qualifying session better for himself. Wow. How about this? Jeff May just goes to the top of the leaderboard, 0 .003. That's three thousandths of a second quicker than Jake Gagne. So Jeff May goes to the top, so he just betters his position from second to first right now. So good job by Jeff May as the checkered flag waves on this session. The 99 works, some way, it works his way into a spot to transfer into Super Pole number two. He's got to get back to the pits. They have a few minutes to get the bike sorted out, get back on the track, and hopefully they have a qualifier already mounted up and ready to roll. Yeah, that's a great lap for him, and I think he's done an outstanding job this week. And this is definitely a guy that deserves to be at every single one of our races, Greg, because he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of experience. He could bring a lot to a team, and he just showed right there why, uh, you know, why I feel that way. To to go ahead and jump up ahead of Jake Gagne is a great, great job. And here's Gagne. He's on another flying lap. I don't think it's going to be quite good enough to, to to bump Jeff out. But we'll just, you know, for me, I want to just see if Jake's bike can get better looking for him because his bike right now just seems to be jumping around all over the place for him. Final corner to the checkered flag, and Gagne doesn't improve his time. He will sit on that 26.917. So it's going to be Jeff May and Jake Gagne that will transfer from Super Pole number one and head on over to join the top 10 in Super Pole number two. So great confidence builder and a stand up wheelie. Jeff doesn't live too far from Road Atlanta. He has a lot of time around this racetrack, lives right here in Georgia, probably 30 minutes or less from the track. So he's happy to put that thing at the top of Super Pole number one. Hang with us, and we'll be back in a few moments. Welcome back to the Moto America Championship at Suzuki, Suzuki Superbike Shootout of Georgia. I'm Greg with Jason, and we are getting ready to look at Super Bowl One highlights. And it started with a bit of an incident, Jason. Yeah, right coming down the hill there out of 10B, Kaczynski and Johnny Rock Page both got together. I'm not really sure what happened. I'm sure we'll, we'll get to know as the day goes on. We'll figure out what happened. We see Hayden Gillen coming down that same hill getting all out of shape, trying really hard to get that lap. He ended up third in our session. And there's number 32, Jake Gagne, who led for most of the session and sat around in the pits, tried to get one flying lap towards the end, but still managed to put himself in second spot, which will transfer him to Super Bowl number two. But it was the man of the hour right now, number 99, Jeff May, who put in a lap time three thousandths of a second. That's .003, quicker than Gagne to be the number one seed coming out of Super Bowl number one to get into Super Bowl number two, and that will be 12 riders. So here's a look at the Super Bowl results from Super Bowl number one. Jeff May leads the way over Jake Gagne, and then just off the bubble, Hayden Gillum, Kyle Wyman, David Anthony, Tommy Puerta, Chris Ulrich, Barrett Long, and Billy Etheridge. You can take a look at those lap times. There's an incident there with Johnny Rock Page and Kaczynski that caused the red flag. And unfortunately, Josh Day, on the Westby Racing Yama Loop, Yamaha didn't get out there. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, Super Bowl number two's next. The top 12 fastest in the US go after it. In Georgia, just about 35 miles north of Hotlanta, and it is a beautiful day today, right around 70 degrees, and the wind is blowing, and we're getting ready for Super Pole number two. This is going to set the front part of the grid, and of course, riders are going to head out right now as the clock is ticking, getting ready to tick with just a few moments left, 
and they're going to do some warm-up laps. They're going to come in, and they're going to put on a qualifying tire. And I'm going to tell you, it's easy to distinguish the qualifying tire because it has a nice yellow band around the outside edge of that Dunlop. Absolutely. And what you're going to see is all these guys are going to go out on race rubber for probably the first six, seven minutes. They're just going to do the best time they can, make sure their bikes are good, make sure everything's settled the way they want to have it. And then they're going to come in, and you'll see that that gold or yellow band, like you said, around that rear tire, and that's gonna be that one lap tire. And that's when you just hope that you don't get any traffic. You gotta, you really have to communicate with your crew, Greg, to make sure that they can find that open space, that open gap for you. Uh, this is a track where you can utilize some draft. You can hook up with somebody as, as long as they don't get in your way. So just to get you familiar with some of the big names, number four you're looking at right there, that's Josh Hayes, four Superbike Championships at this level, seven overall in his career racing in this series. And Josh Hayes had the number one plate two years ago and lost it to his teammate. He's on the Monster Energy Graves Yamaha. Cameron Bobier is his teammate. He's on number one. Tony Elias came over here from Spain to fill in for an injured Jake Lewis on the Oshimira Factory Suzuki. We'll learn more about that later. Roger Hayden's on the 95. Josh Heron is on the number two. Wheels in Motion Motorsports mean Yamaha. That's a Super Stock 1000. The fastest of those riders in practice. Taylor Knapp, Bobby Fong, Danny Esla, Claudio Corti, and Sheridan Marias, along with Jeff May and Jake Gagne. And one of the things you need to pay attention to there is you saw Josh Heron right up the back. They were teammates at one time, him and Josh Hayes. So, and Josh Heron is so good at tagging on the back of somebody. He can just put it down and put down a lap, and we've seen him do that there this weekend. And right now, he's gonna try to do his best to just stick on the back of Josh Hayes. Now, the other interesting part of this, they'll be on kind of the same kind of pit plan program, because when Josh Hayes comes in, Josh Heron will come in. They'll be changing tires at the same time. Wouldn't be shocked to see Josh Heron try to chase Josh back out of the pits when they do get that qualifying tire on. Josh Heron, of course, a Superbike champion here in the United States a few years ago, and then launched his career at the world level and went off to Moto2. Didn't have a great experience, and that basically halfway through the season was over. So Josh Heron working his way back up to speed and into favor here in the Moto America series. And keep in mind, you can see those number plates. Josh Heron with that red backing and that white number two. He's on a Super Stock 1000 motorcycle, not supposedly as fast as a Superbike. That's correct. And here we got Roger Lee Hayden. Roger is kind of on a mission right now. I, I, he's been, you know, the la last weekend I think was tough on him. He was leading the race and then had red flag. And then, of course, Tony comes in and wins a couple races. It would be just really neat to see uh, Raj have a great weekend here. Not too far from home, almost a home race for him. I remember him racing here many, many years ago and uh, making an incredible pass around the outside of the old turn 10 here. So we're starting to look at some lap times coming across the board. And like I said, Josh Heron just went quicker than Josh Hayes, even though on screen, Josh Hayes is ahead of him. And this is for the pole position. That means you're going to get the closest look at turn one when we're on the grid. It's three riders across on each row here in Moto America Superbike Racing Competition. No points for pole. Some of you that maybe are new to Moto America that think that they know the old system, this is MotoGP type scoring. No points for pole, no points for most laps led. It's points if you finish a race, 25 for first, 20 for second, 16 for third, and on back. So Josh Hayes out there first, wants to put in the best time. This is a brand new motorcycle in 2015, the Yamaha R1, and it's a smaller motorcycle. Feels more like a 600. It kind of rides like a 600, according to Josh Hayes, his teammate Cam Bobier. You see somebody in the back there making a mistake, but Cam Bobier really adapted to the motorcycle better than Hayes. I mean, Hayes won more races than Bobier, but Bobier ended up winning the number one plate at the end of the points count. Yeah, and I think Josh got so used to the old R1 and was so happy on it. And when you throw something new at it, everybody just expected Josh to just come out and just rip. And he was so comfortable in the old one that he had to adapt to this new one. It's taking a little bit of time, but. You can see both these guys are still on there, still, I would suspect that this will be both of their last laps. And Josh Hayes has pulled away a little bit from Heron on this stuff. So we're gonna look at the times, see if this moves him up at all, that it does. Josh just barely gets through it at 26 flat. For perspective, earlier on today, uh, Josh in our free practice three went 25-7. So he's only, well, he's really close to what he did three this tenths. morning. Yep. And he did it in two laps. So now you can see him sitting up. Uh, Heron will be doing the exact same thing behind him as you can tell. And uh, they'll cruise around, get a new tire, and then, then the fireworks are gonna start here probably with about seven minutes to go. Oil and the suspension warming up right now. They get a feel for the bike and the riders warm, which is probably the most important part of it all as they head back to get 
Well, yeah, as, as Hayes has a nice long look over his shoulder, they all do to see who's behind him. They don't want to hold up any particular rider, but it's Hayes, Heron, Cameron Bobier. So 26.0 to 26.1 to 26.1 to 26.2 for Tony Elias to 26.3 for Roger Hayden. Now let's go down to Christy Lee with more. Thank you, number 95, Roger Hayden just came in momentarily. Are you having issues with the bike? Maybe a tire change? What's the plan? No, we're going to go with the qualifier right away. We're going to try to get two laps out of it. All right, best of luck, Raj. Whoa, that's something different. I mean, oftentimes we hear that, you know, on, on a longer track like Coda, it was worth one lap for sure, but two laps is going to be stretching it just a little bit, I think, here. It's going to be really interesting on Raj's second lap how, when he gets down to the end of the back straightaway and goes through the 10A, 10B, and then onto the front straightaway. Turns that are relatively slow that you really got to trust that tire and get back on it. As you can see, Josh stayed out for one more extra lap here. Didn't go any quicker, kind of cruised the beginning of that lap. We're looking at Cam Bobrie, just went quicker, only just though, 25-9. So he'll, those, he and Josh Hayes should be coming in the next lap. Tony Elias jumps to the top now, 25-6. So there you go, the fill-in rider on the Oshimera Suzuki from Spain, Tony Elias, Moto2 world champion. He's raced many series, very fast, comes in here and makes a statement early on by winning the first two races of the year and is your points leader as a fill-in rider. I don't, I don't think I can ever remember anything like that happening. Trust me, I saw a conversation last night between Yoshimura Suzuki, Suzuki Corporation, and Tony Elias. There's got to be talks going on about his future right here in the United States. Well, you would think so. He's obviously very, very resume is, is huge he's a former world champion he comes out wins the first two races shows that he's got incredible speed at a track he's never seen and like i've told you all weekend there's no such thing as a home track to the guys at the level that josh hayes or or tony Elias or, or or any of these guys are at because it's just pavement they just got to figure it out and that's what they're doing and they got great teams to do it well tony Elias is filling in for the young star at the oshimira suzuki crew it's jake lewis and here is christy with more just grabbing Jake briefly as he was speaking with his crew. Jake, I know when we caught up earlier this week, you were obviously disappointed to be standing by watching the racing going on. What's your prognosis? When can we expect to maybe see you back on the bike? Uh, you know, hopefully New Jersey, but uh, only time will tell because uh, I just started doing therapy two weeks ago to get my range of motion back and then uh, actually got on a dirt bike for the first time this week and felt okay. So uh, hopefully I'll be back sooner or later. You know, I'm trying really hard to get back out there and uh, it's really frustrating, you know, watching being here on the sidelines, but uh, the team's doing really good, you know, one, two at the first round, and uh, so far it's going pretty good here in Super Bowl. So uh, happy to be at the races, been bummed not to be racing, but uh, it's part of the sport getting hurt, and uh, I'll just come back stronger. Jake, heal up, looking forward to seeing you again soon. What a position to be in at such a young age, 20 years old, and, you know, he's injured. He's got a factory ride. It's his second year. It's the year that they start to expect some results out of Jake Lewis. He gets injured, and now all of a sudden Tony Elias comes in. I, look, I can tell you, Jason, from talking to Don Sakakor at Suzuki, they are 100% behind Jake Lewis. They love him for the future, and, and you know, but you, I would imagine you can't help in your mind think, I've got to come back quickly, and I've got to get make sure I hold on to my job, you know, and, and you don't want someone coming back from injury that quickly. It's horrible as a rider because no matter how tight-knit you are with your crew and how happy you are with your team, seeing somebody else jump on your bike always hurts a little bit. And I've unfortunately had that pleasure of seeing that <laughs> a few times, and that's miserable. But this guy's just stepped in and done such a tremendous job. And you can see that tire. You can see that gold tire. <laughs> yeah. No, no and, doubt it's and, a cue. And generally, these guys have talked to Dunlop. Dunlop has, has told these guys, has told Roger Hayden, hey, we think it could go two laps because of the shortness of the lap here at, at Road Atlanta. So it could go two laps. And look at everybody diving in. All those guys, Sheridan Marias, Danny Essick, they're just, they're sharks now. They're just yeah. coming after the bait, you know? So yeah. that's what they want. And we got Raj getting ready to start his first flying lap. And you can see that gold tire going. So we'll see how Raj does. Now, keep in mind, we, we got to be cognizant of people pulling out of the pits right now. That's the worst thing you could see is somebody coming up out of pit lane right now because you got to go through all these S's in there one line, and you can see how well that Dunlop's gripping right now. He just went 25-9 that last lap to move him up. So he's got one good test lap on it. Let's see if he can improve right now. All eyes on Roger Hayden, the 95. Pressure on him as well with the teammate Tony Elias, who comes in after a year with Suzuki had no wins, period, across the board. And now Tony Elias shows up and gets the double. And it looks like they're going to 
Josh Hayes is in the pits right now, and his team's going to throw a cue on that one as well, as Tony Elias still leads the way at a 25-6 from Roger Hayden, Cambobier, Hayes in fourth, Heron in fifth spot. So if you start seeing this tire slide at all, it's yeah. done. So okay. that's what you really got to be cognizant of, is looking and seeing if these tires are starting to slide. Now, you saw the three that left the pit lane here just a little bit. Roger's coming into the fastest section of the track, coming down into turn 10, A and B. All three of those guys are very, very... They're all veterans of the sport, so they're going to get out of his way if it gets close enough. But they are all out on their cues right yeah. now and taking it easy so that they don't wear it out. And you can see this is actually going to probably mess up Roger's lap a little bit. But also, this is a cue lap, so these riders in front have got to get through this last corner good and get a good drive, so it might help Roger just a little bit. Oh, it looks like Sheridan Marias may be getting the way. So here comes Roger Hayden across the stripe, yeah, and there he goes to the top of the leaderboard, a 25-4-8-0. That's his one qualifying tire. That's it. He's got to sit on that time because he's not going any faster. And he's going to be mad at that. He's not going to be happy because he knows before he went out that his teammate went 25-6 on a race. Yeah. And Raj, you know, I think that he probably had another two or three tenths. You know, when you come up on a group like that, it just does something to you mentally even. It's very difficult to continue to push because in your mind, you don't want to run up on him and catch him in the middle of a corner and slow yourself down. Cameron Bovier is getting ready to go out right now with his cue. And what we're noticing here is that we've seen a lot of guys already go out on their cues. And he's going to have a pretty clear track when he does decide to get ready to go out. Doesn't look like the easiest rear tire change. Oftentimes when you see a rider checking out what's going on, that means they're a little concerned as the clock now is Cameron Bobier's enemy. 3.34 remaining on the clock. Keep in mind, he's got to go out and do a lap, but Jason, you talked about it. No one is going out on a queue and going flat out. You've got to kind of manage the heat in that tire. And so making sure that Cameron's going to have enough time. Now, Tony Elias, the 24, is on a fast one right now as he bends it into turn number 10A and 10B. This is his first of what looks like two qualifying laps. Yeah, he is got a lot of clear track in front of him. He's pulled away from those two super stock bikes that followed him out. Let's have a look at this first flying lap and see what uh, Tony can do here. He had the fastest first split of his for himself. He jumps up Bang. 25 flat, just like that, Greg. Fastest split in section number three. Sector number three, 25.068. Roger Hayden, 25.480, so plenty of time a four tenths of a second to wedge a bunch of riders in between. So right now it's Elias on pole, Roger Hayden in second, Cameron Bobier rounding out the front row with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining in this session. Look at Elias, he is on it. And what it does is it gives you so much confidence. When you go out there on that first lap, being able to do a second lap on a queue is magic because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've got that first lap under your belt and the whole time you're out there, you're thinking, wow, I could have gone a little faster here. I could have done this a little bit better there. If you know that you're going to do a second lap, it just gives you that much more confidence to try to push that envelope a little bit harder. Now, as he gets ready to head out onto this back straightaway, uh, it looks like the first split, first split's okay. It's not great. Now we're looking at Josh Hayes. And what did I say earlier? Josh Heron would probably chase him out. Yep. And that's exactly Oh, what and Heron, wow. So Josh Heron wow. nearly high sides the motorcycle. He's able to save it and ride it into the gravel trap. So his qualifying session is done. So the motorcycle hits the deck, but it didn't look like it's going to bother it too much as Josh Hayes has no idea what's going on behind him because there's no rear view mirrors. Yeah, that was huge. And Josh Hayes just moves up to second on that lap. So 25-1. Uh, Generally, a qualifying tire is good for about a second. So when we saw this morning Cameron Bobier went 25-1 as we look at Josh Heron getting himself out of the kitty litter here. We saw Cameron Bobier go 25-1 this morning on a race tire. I suspect him to get into the 24. So we'll see how that works. And we'll look for Tony Elliott since he's done the fastest second split uh, to see if he can get in. Look at all that gravel. All that gravel coming out of the bottom of Josh Heron's motorcycle with that bottom fairing that's all closed up. And you know what? That's really cool of him because I think he saw that there was a lot of ground. You're going to get a look at it here. I told you, if those tires slip at all, ooh, ooh. that actually lost the front. He had yeah. so much grip that when he rolled the when when he when he rolled the throttle on, you're going to see that front tire actually start to turn underneath him here. So, yeah, we're a little bit late in the shot there, but you can see when he started to roll the gas on, it whoa. actually picked the front of the bike up. Yep. Oh, doggy. You got to ride that thing into the gravel. So... Boy, that could have been absolute disaster for Josh Heron. He didn't get the lap he wanted right now, sitting in position number five. But the crew will have to get to work on that motorcycle for racing tomorrow as the number two, the number one super stock bike coming into this session, Josh Heron, able to hold on to that motorcycle and prevent any huge damage. 
And the thing I'm looking at now is Tony Ellis' second lap was six tenths slower than his first. So we're going to have to look and see if that second tire is going to, or second lap is going to be a benefit to them. So there's the number one Cameron Bobier right now on a ripping lap. Is he going to be able to pole vault himself into pole position as it's Elias Hayes and Roger Hayden? And now here he comes to the stripe. Cameron Bobier. And there he goes, 24-844 for the California native, the number one plate, the reigning national champion, goes 24-844 with the checkered flag flying. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was expecting. I thought he would do a 24, and he's not going to get the benefit, or, or it looks like he's still on it. So he might have just beat the checkered flag. He might try to go even faster now. Christy with Josh Heron. Josh, that was certainly what could have been a disastrous incident, but what a save. Tell us what happened. Yeah, you know, I just uh, came out of that corner, and I think that qualifying tire was starting to let go, and I just had a little bit too much confidence with it, and, uh, you know, I don't know how I saved that one. I just kind of relaxed and, and tried to ride it through and almost saved it the whole the whole way, but as soon as I hit the gravel, lost the front. But, you know, I think that lap would have been mid-25s at least, and Hayes didn't want me following him, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do, and, and right now we're at a disadvantage with these uh, super stock 1000s, and I'm just trying to trying to make the most out of it. You know, it's a shame we couldn't get it, but hopefully our time with the uh, race tire is good enough to uh, keep us in the front two rows. Big save for Josh Heron. Thanks. Thank you. And after uh, the checkered flag flew, Cameron Bobier actually was is still on a lap. He still has a flying lap. So what do you see, Jay? I see he's got back markers in front of him. That's uh, going to hurt his lap a little bit as Jake Gagne just kind of got in his way a little bit in that last corner. Yep, that's it. That was so the difference. It looked like Cameron Bobier had two incredible splits in sector number one and sector number two. Just a little bit of traffic, and instead of a 124.844, he does a 125 flat. So, but no harm, no foul for Cameron Bobier, as Cameron Bobier is going to be your pole sitter for tomorrow. Race, superbike races. It's Bobier, Elias, Josh Hayes, Hayden, and Josh Heron. So, we're going to take a break right here on BN Sports. Don't go anywhere. We have more stuff coming. You're going to love it. Superbike qualifying is in the books, and what a Super Bowl, too, it was. Jason Cameron Bobier on top, and we kind of expected that. Yeah, I think the first four guys that we see there, the two pack for Yosh Bike for Tony Elias and Drago Hayden, of course, Cameron Bobier and Josh Hayes on the Yamahas. I think you said, you know, we heard Josh Heron say that he thought he could go quicker. I believe that. Bobby Fong, Marias, Eslick, and Taylor Knapp ran out your top nine. The last five there being on super stock bikes, and we look back, Gagne and May obviously made it through through Q1. Claudio Cortez right in the middle of them. All right, well now, let's go down to Christy Lee, who I hear has our pole sitter. Cameron, congratulations on pole. Obviously better results this weekend than last weekend. What can we expect from you come race time? Yeah, definitely, you know, it's uh, it's really nice to to start off the weekend with a, with a pole position after the weekend we had uh, last weekend at Coda. So just really enjoying riding my Monster Energy Graves Yamaha here. Uh, I love this place. This place was good to me last year, so uh, I'm hoping for the same luck, luck come tomorrow. Cam, best of luck. All right, well, yeah, good to him last year. He won both races in 2015 right here at Road Atlanta. So Cameron Bobier, the reigning champ, is your pole sitter for the Superbike races tomorrow. But coming up, a 20-lap main event. We get racing here at Road Atlanta. It's Super Sports Super Stock 600 coming up after the break. Don't go anywhere. Good look at race fans enjoying the beautiful, absolutely stunning weather here in Georgia. We couldn't ask for a better weekend. It's one of those things in Georgia where you look at the forecast heading into the weekend and you think, whoop, might be some rain, might not be. Well, compared to last year, every single session of every single class, riders had to run rain tires. This is stark contrast to that. In the Super Sport class last year, it was Josh Heron who now races in the Superbike Superstock 1000 class and Garrett Gerloff with the wins. And Joe Roberts won both Superstock 600 races right here at Road Atlanta last year. 
All right, Jason, looks like visors are down and we're getting ready to get underway. What happens right now? Well, these guys are going to head out for their warm-up lap. And like you said, having such a beautiful day, the tarmac's already going to be nice and warm. Bikes have had the warmers on them, so these guys are all going to be ready to go. But, you know, I always just think I want to get the best warm-up lap I can possibly get, get as much heat into my tires as I can. And being at Road Atlanta specifically, we have so many more right-handers than actual left-handers. And by that, you know, we have some left-handers here, but we don't, um, we're not on the left side of the tires for very long. So it's real easy to get one side of the tires a little bit warmer than the other. Being that we have a first turn here that goes right, I want to make sure to get the right side of my tires as hot as I possibly can. So that's why you've seen these guys take off uh, almost as if they're off on a race start. Get out there, get a good warm-up lap, and come back to the grid ready to go. And this is really when you've, you've already done all your homework. Now you can really start thinking about your craft of racing itself. And we've got a really deep field here, even in the super stock class. I think the super stock battle is going to be really nice. I think the, the front three that you see on the front row for super sport, those are kind of our ones that we're expecting the, the winner to come from. It'd be great to see the likes of Benny Solis or, or Joe Roberts even. I think Joe's a, a, a huge talent. Someone's been winning races in the former champion in the super stock class. So, but then we go back and we got super stock. There's any one of a number of kids that can really win that race, even though right now Bryce Prince has shown that he's he's been really good this weekend. Xavier really picked up at the end of that qualifying session today in that pole from him. Just to give you an idea of how we got here, you have those six super sport riders, of course, filling the first two rows. And then on back is Superstock. What happens is, is that in the Superstock uh, practice, they take the top 15 riders, they automatically transfer into this main event, and then they have a 10 lap qualifying race, and only five from that race get to come in this event. So it's always hotly contested. A lot of these riders are either young and they're just coming up, or they are club racers here in the region and don't have the money necessarily to spend against the factories in super sport, but they want to come out here and race, and Moto America makes it available for everyone. This is the place where you want to go to get your name out there when you're racing, including this rider, number 53, Valentine de Bees from France in the super sport class, France, South Africa, in the United States, Kentucky, California, Texas. So a variety of places represented, incredible talent, and they're starting to gravitate right back here in the United States because of how great the racing is and the availability to go racing as well. Yeah, this is this is where our next future Superbike champions and things will come from. And for the ladies out there, we got three women in this race that are very, very fast. That a couple of them, all three of them, all three of them qualified in that top 15 in Superstock and made it through to this main event without having to go to the last chance qualifier. And I think that's a, a really neat thing to be said. Caroline Olson, Melissa Paris, and Ann Roberts, those three women in the field. It's row seven and row eight. All right, here we go. The red flag is now stepped aside, and it is time to do the business. Upper left-hand part of your screen, you're going to see what unfolds right now when that light goes out. Here we go. And we are off and racing. It's the dash to turn number one and up the hill. Who's going to make it to turn two first? It looks like the number one of J.D. Beach is leading the way. And this is really important to get out to a good start here at this track because you get through this first little section and you'll see some separation probably from fourth, fifth, sixth back maybe. But these, these first guys are all veterans of this track. They know that they got to kind of get single file down through here. Their only thought now is, we, I, I guarantee you, Valentine's thought right now is I've got to get onto that back straightaway with these guys and hopefully draft these Yamahas. But JD's got the dream start. He wanted to get ahead of his, of his teammate really quick. Jay, Joe Roberts just had a big moment out of turn five. You saw Ben Solis have to st uh, stop up there, and you can see that gap has created between number, them. Yeah, number 35, Benny Solis on that Honda now starting to lose touch just here in these first couple of corners. We'll see if riders can work the draft and work their way back up. We have Yamaha, Yamaha, Suzuki right now leading the way. What does Garrett Gerloff have in the tank as he goes into the slipstream of his teammate, and now Gerloff goes up the inside and takes over the lead. Now the question is, can either one of these two tag onto him? And you and I have both said. Oh, sorry, Jason, as Valentine goes up the inside, and now he's in second. Yeah, this section they're coming up to now, you and I went out and watched. Garrett Gerloff is so fast from underneath this bridge down the backside of this hill. This is where he's been pulling a ton of time on people. Watch the corner speed through this very tight turn number 12 as Gerloff opens up the throttle and starts to scoot to the line to complete the first lap. It's Gerloff in second place, Valentine de Bees on that Suzuki, and then the reigning champ, J.D. Beach. Yeah, behind them, Cameron Peterson is just trying to hang on. Benny Solis had to check up for Joe Roberts, as I said, so he's trying to fight back and get up there and drag Joe along with him. 
Cameron Peterson back there in fourth spot having a great race so far after he wrote a motorcycle off. That's something that the riders have to come back from after destroying equipment. He was actually OK. So here we go. Number 31, Garrett Gerloff talked about. It. He's had plenty of track time here over the years. He really likes this place. And Jason, in a conversation with him earlier today, he told me he's much more relaxed coming to the racetrack. And that's boosted his confidence. He said a couple things have happened. He has a trainer. He has someone that helps him with stretching exercises. And he has a nutritionist as well. Yeah, you can see it. When you, as a rider, you have that confidence. Valentine is trying so hard to go with him right now. And you can see See JD, his worst fear is coming apart. He's seeing his teammate get away just a little bit. And in fairness, Garrett has made it look easy this year. That's the sad thing is he's made it look very simple. And right now, he's just kind of easing away from these guys. And we'll see if he gets out to that two or three second lead, if, he, if it's possible, how much he continues to keep pushing. Because right now, these two guys behind him are working hard to stay with him. So 19 laps to go in this 20 lap affair right now as Valentine looks like he's got the front end shakes when he gets on the gas. Yeah, well he's still a little bit leaned over coming out of turn B. And when you're on the right side of the tire and they're 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 in such a short gear, it's making that front very light as they even with a little bit of lean angle still. Quick work from Garrett Gerloff, 28.3 of course on lap two. He leads the way with the fastest lap of the race. Valentine to B's 28.6. And J.D. Beach with a 28.5 on that lap. You can see that J.D. is starting to close the gap ever so slightly on that Suzuki. But when they get to the top of the hill, turn two, three area, it looks like that Suzuki's really nimble. Yeah, it is really nimble. But you can see Garrett dis disappearing at the top of the hill. Yeah. Two, three, four. I sat there on the fence the other day, and he just looked so fast. His transitions were so simple and easy on the motorcycle. So as we get to watch this race more, you're going to get to see some, some shots of him going through there. And his body position, he just makes all those uh, left, right, left just look so simple. Here's the South African Cam Peterson, also riding for that M4 Sport Bike Track Gear.com Suzuki team. And Cam Peterson, a 130.269 last time by, has Benny Solis just trying to sniff the draft with Joe Roberts back there in 6'5. And I think, I think you said something earlier about Joe Roberts. I really thought Joe would be up more front, uh, up in the front, closer to these guys. He showed last year that he could be up there. So I, I think he's having some teething issues just getting the bike set up for him personally, because I know that's where he should be. But you can see Garrett just easing away. JD and, the, and Valentine are, are going to settle this out for a second. Oh, as oh, a big whoa, moment whoa, for JD whoa. Beach. Big wow. Moment. I mean, it looked like he lost the rear for a second. That was a miraculous save as J.D. Beach sends his Yamaha R6 sideways. That YES Graves Yamaha almost came out from underneath his seat, and he was able to hold on to it. Jason, let's take a replay and see what happened. Well, he's coming down here, and these 600s are going all the way back to first gear. So he's got the bike in the gear it needs to be in now. His only thing is, I've got to get as good a drive as I can out of here. So he's he's hit the inside curbing, Greg, is what he's done. He's hit the inside curbing, and it's just been enough to just knock the bike out from underneath him. And you'll see it from our other look here. It, it, wow. He hit the inside yellow part of the paint there on the curbing, and it was and what a great save. That is as close as you like it. Obviously, he lost that draft. Can J.D. Beach? refocus right now and get back on the back of the bees because that draft is going to be ever so important if Garrett Gerloff is going to give them anything back. I mean, right now, the way Garrett Gerloff is working road Atlanta, it's going to be very difficult. However, it is a long race, 20 laps, and these Dunlop tires will definitely get punished. And if there's any slip up or any show of wear on those tires, it might be an open door for these guys. But J.D. Beach has it all to do right now as an oh. Look at Gerloff sideways. How you like that? Yeah, that was in deep, and you see he missed his apex, but you see his correction. He didn't try to rush between those two corners. He simply just got his bike turned. You see Valentine actually closed Valentine actually closed up on him just a little bit there. That was just a mistake of getting in there too fast, but he still got the bike turned. YES Graves Yamaha, number 31, Garrett Gerloff. This is what we call sideways to the lock, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how you miss an apex, but you're doing it with style. Yeah, you're doing it with style. It's definitely, I'll tell you right now, he, he'll, he'll dump the style points for, for a lead that continues to build. And this is that sex I talked about yesterday. Look how simple he makes that little part of the track look. There's, there's nothing wrong with him. It looks like Benny Solis possibly has just pulled in. So unfortunately for the Honda rider, Benny Solis is going to be out. But all eyes right now on the 31 of Gerloff as he continues to work this track with ease. And Jason, we've seen it before. Some tracks we go to, the more effort that you put into it, the slower you're going to go. And sometimes if you just let it come to you is kind of a term that we use, you go faster. So J.D. Beach. And there is Cam Peterson as he continues in fourth spot. So it's Gerloff, 
the Bees, J.D. Beach, Peterson, Joe Roberts, Xavier Zayas, J.C. Camacho, Travis Wyman, Bryce Prince, and Christian Croslin, your top ten right now. Yeah, and that's quite a battle back there for Superstock. And the front three here spread out a little bit. You can see that Garrett had that little mistake, and he got it sorted. So here you go. There's that replay again. He hit it with the front tire first. The rear tire followed it. But by then, the front had already gone. So he was able to just get that bike back underneath him. And I'm going to tell you something about the mentality of motorcycle racers. If you think by the time he got to turn one and he was thinking about that, that's all in the past. And it was gone. Yeah. It was gone. It's time to move forward. Yeah. Because JD wants to stay on the podium and he wants to try to reel into bees and go after him. So Gerloff to bees, JD Beach. Now, the one thing about Garrett Gerloff, Jason, I thought was interesting is he, he actually said that he needed to lose weight this year. He wanted to drop a few pounds because his teammate JD Beach is like 130 and Garrett's down to 155. Why would you need to lose weight at this well, level? Every bit of poundage is horsepower. And I think that that's the big thing for these guys is getting light, getting skinny, getting staying fit. And and that's what uh, that's what Garrett did during the whole offseason. And we talked about it before that Benny Solis is in the pits and he is retired from the race. Christy, do you have Benny down there? Benny, obviously disappointed since your team worked so hard to get that bike ready to go for this race. What happened? Um, the clutch burned out. It happened to us once before, so it's something we got to work on. But uh, anyways, I felt good, but I felt good. We still have tomorrow, so looking forward to it. Best of luck tomorrow. We'll see you then. All right, that's the benefit actually of this Super Sport Super Stock 600 class is that you do have two races a weekend and they're separated by an evening as opposed to Superbike. You got to run them both in the same day. A good look at Valentine the Bees on that M4 Sport Bike trackgear.com Suzuki GSXR 600. And this French rider coming here was basically virtually unknown, and now podium finishes and he puts himself in this position. He's doing unbelievable, and he's keeping Garrett honest. Let's yeah. be fair, Let's, he really is. He's keeping Garrett honest. The last lap before this one, Garrett had that mistake. He came back and ran the fastest lap of the race right after that. Well, this lap here, there's only a tenth separating him. So Valentine's really trying to just keep Garrett honest, maybe push him into mistake later on in the race, because I think that Garrett probably went into this race feeling like he was going to open up a quick four, five, six second lead. And, uh, you know, and he's, and he's being kept honest. JD's just falling back a little bit. All right, here's Cam Peterson now in fourth spot. His last time around, he did a 130.256. So about a second slower than the three in front of him. But behind him, he's got number 27, Joe Roberts, who's trying to close that gap. So there again is another Suzuki GSXR 600. And Cam losing all kinds of time in practice, as did Joe Roberts. He was only able to do five laps in one of the sessions earlier, and he missed about 25 minutes of setup time. So that's part of the teething thing that Jason was talking about. But this rider, the number 27 of Joe Roberts, he was about one second faster than Cam Peterson in front of him. So it seems like Joe Roberts is really starting to get this motorcycle sorted out for himself and maybe starting to figure out exactly how to ride it. The wheels in motion mean motorsports Yamaha. Yeah, and it was unfortunate. I think he had an accident yesterday, so it knocked him out of a session and uh, made it very difficult for, the, for obviously today. And then we got a big battle back here. This should be some of our super stock class, Greg. This is the battle for seventh place. And we have Xavier Zayat, Bryce Prince, Christian Croslin, Dakota Mamola in the mix. This is the battle for first in Superstock. So right here, you got a big battle between all these guys for, for first place here. And, and when you see those red number plates, they're all battling for the lead in, in 600 Superstock. So Christian Croslin actually running numbers in the Super Sport class in this one. But look at this battle raging on. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of motorcycles in the mix. It's now the 34. Xavier Zayat moves himself back J past J.C. Camacho. So the 34 and the 91 going after it right now. And by the way, in the Super Stock 600 class, they have their own podium. They get to stand on that podium and celebrate. And they're going for an overall at the same time. I mean, it's always good to say, yeah, listen, if you can beat a Super Sport bike, on a Super Stock 600 <laughs> motorcycle, there's a lot of pride in that. Absolutely, and, and this is a great little battle right here, and you can see Dakota just on the back end of them. So he's running fourth in the Super Stock class right now, and he's just off the back, trying his best to get himself back in there. This is the battle for sixth spot, as number 34 is Xavier Zayat, and then J.C. Camacho when they were with Bryce Prince. We saw him earlier on the grid. Look at that M4 Sport Bike Track here.com Suzuki again, just in a in a mix of Yamahas. And we talk about that quite often because Yamaha dominated the season last year here 
in Moto America by winning every single race, well, except the KTM Cup, of course. <laughs> exactly Those are all right. KTMs. Yep. All right, let's check in on the leader, Garrett Gerloff. Now, Gerloff last time by just did a 28-3-5-3. He just put another two tenths of a second into Valentine DeBees. But DeBees is keeping him honest as they're the only two riders in the 28 range. Last, last year, Camp Peterson here, who we're looking at in fourth place, was on, a, was on one of those Yamahas. And this year, John's gone out, Ulrich has gone out, and he's got two great riders with Valentine and Cameron. And now we're back at that big battle. J.C. Camacho, Xavier Zayat, Bryce Prince, all three of them going at it as they head into turn one. Look at the bouncing front end of that motorcycle. A little wide line, and there it goes. The Suzuki goes back to the top. So the 91 of Camacho couldn't get his motorcycle slowed down over the bumps. He lost some drive up that hill, and Bryce Prince wasn't able to take advantage on the 74. It, the third place rider in this battle as we look at this battle for sixth place and the Super Stock 600 battle for the possible win. And it's awesome. It's great that these guys are getting to, to battle with themselves. Even if it's a kind of a race within a race, we're getting, uh, we're getting a good look at some of the young talent here. Xavier Zayat, his first race uh, was at Coda last week for this team. I think that that definitely was a benefit for him. For him. And now we go back to the battle for fourth between Cam Peterson and Joe Roberts. Joe Roberts with a bit between his teeth right now, trying to claw in fourth place rider Peterson as Peterson continues to circulate this racetrack in the 130 range and Roberts in the 129. So he continues Roberts, the 27, that's the yellow and black motorcycle behind this blue M4 Suzuki continues to chip away at it right now, Jason, and he is getting awfully close. And that's what he does. He just kind of. You know, I think Joe's just taking what he can get right now. He's riding really smart. He's not overriding the bike. It's got to be frustrating for him to see those guys getting away. But this is a kid that I really rate. I think uh, watching him over the last couple of years, he's done an incredible job. And then we're going to go back to this incredible <laughs> fight again. We could probably watch this race all day as these three guys just keep going back and forth. And there. Yeah, Xavier goes underneath him in turn one again. You could tell, actually, if you really look at it from the shadows and where they're placing on the racetrack, that's the dead giveaway in their side. Oh, this is a one-lane road right here. And the 91, J.C. Camacho, he could care less as he takes over the point. Yeah, and it, it's funny because that is, just like you say, it's super one-line. It's blind, you're going uphill, and you're on the brakes. The last thing you want is somebody underneath you trying to come past you right there into such a narrow little, narrow little gap. Bryce Prince hanging back there on the 74, waiting to collect this if it all goes wrong. And there goes the 34 one more time. Xavier Zayat takes over the point. It looks like he really wants to lead going onto the back straightaway and stretch the legs of that Suzuki 600. And Crossland's getting a great view, as is Dakota back there. These three guys all going at it. So they're trying to throw their hats in the mix here also. This is the battle for sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth as Dakota Mamola. The number 80 on that red motorcycle hanging back there. So it's Suzuki. Look at his four wide heading wow. into turn number 10. And look at Croslin on the 66 right part of your screen. He makes a move, as does Camacho. Man, this is crazy racing all the way around. Xavier squared up Camacho as they come back down the hill and was able to go back underneath oh, them. And here comes Bryce, Bryce Prince. Prince side Prince. by side with Croslin. Who's oh. going to give an inch? No one as Croslin holds his ground and able to hold on to eight spot. All I kept on thinking about was that paint. I was saying, don't hit the uh, paint don't hit the on the inside yeah. where you saw JD hit it earlier. So that was great riding by Bryce Prince to just kind of stay off that and, and give Croslin enough room. Don't pull a JD beach. <laughs> yeah. Motorcycle protesting as they come up the hill on the 34 machine. Xavier Zayat leading the way in six spot with a little bit of breathing room. But now it looks like our race leader, Garrett Gerloff, is getting through traffic and getting through traffic cleanly. Yeah, that's going to help him here because if Valentine gets stuck at all just going into this turn 10A, 10B area, that's going to be very difficult for him to make up. I feel like he was just trying so hard to hang on. And you can see the gap now that has been stretched out there by the two or three riders that, that he had to go past. If you're standing down in turn 12 watching this rider go through there, your mouth would be open and you would be saying, how is that humanly possible? Now the gap has increased as Garrett Gerloff comes across and he was able to, in traffic, do just about the same lap time. There's the bees. He gets through that traffic into turn number one. So he got him in a good spot. That's yep. just how it is. He, he got those guys on the back straightaway and was able to just get by them as they go down. And, and the bees just got stuck behind them. And that's it's too bad. But this guy's going to just keep fighting on. 
Hey, if he gets a second place, 20 points in the bank. He had a great run at Coda last week. He's got one better today if he continues to stay in this spot. We got nine laps to go. Anything can still happen. So we'll just see how, uh, how it plays out. A little bit further back is JD. Not a bad phone call to take for Team Motor John Ulrich of Team Hammer. When this Frenchman right here gave him a call in the offseason and said, hey, listen, uh, I continue to compete in the FIM World Endurance Series, but I'd like to come to the United States and race with uh, no, well, there's a couple of conflicts, but Valentine DeBees chose to come here and race in the Moto America Series full time, and he is really making his name known. And so is this rider right now, Garrett Gerloff. He is just on a tear. Yeah, he is just, he's checked out, and he's doing the same very low 28s, lap after lap after lap. In fact, he was the only rider that last lap to get into the 28s. So, uh, but you know, we saw uh, he's definitely got some traffic and he's gonna go by another guy right now. Looks like he's going by Mark Rhodes as they head into the last corner there. I like the control over the motorcycle right there. With this rider, it's his first visit to this track, Valentine de Bees, and he's still able to manipulate through different lines and get the motorcycle turned and away on the racetrack. What about the foot out thing, Jason? Yeah, well, big battle here as they come down that hill again as they're going down into turn 10. A, 10, B. This is going to go all the way to the end. And now you can see Dakota and Bryce have, are, are back there kind of battling with each other as Crossland has put himself as the divider between all these super stock bikes. And again, we're seeing where Zaya is able to oh. cross back pass and go underneath uh, and oh. pass him as they come into the last corner. Wow, hold your breath. He was deep into the final corner right there, but able to pull it off. That 34 right there, Xavier Zayat and JC Camacho going side by side. The 91 has got some legs. Can he hold it off into turn one? No. Zayat has position. He's able to hold the spot. Sixth spot. Ooh. Oh, and almost up and out of the saddle is Croslin there to capitalize on the 91 as Camacho made a big mistake on the throttle and Bryce, Bryce Prince, Prince got, gets him as well. Yeah, Bryce Prince was able to get by him. You can see it. Craig, you just make a tiniest little mistake. A little bit of error, just getting on the gas a little bit too much. All of a sudden, he went from almost leading this group to back to fourth in this group now. So Bryce doesn't want to let, uh, doesn't want to let Zayat get away. And you can see this is coming out of turn one. A lot of lean angle, just gets on the gas a little bit. Something that uh, a lot of track day riders have done in the past also. Yeah. It just, it happens sometimes. These guys are on the edge pushing. Now, if Crossland gets by these, gets by Zaya, it's going to be really interesting then because he's going to be kind of right in the mix of this, this win for the Superstock class. And he's showing that he's, he's right there with them now. Christian Crosland right there on that white motorcycle in the draft. Does he have the legs on that motorcycle to get by the other Suzuki in front of him? How about the Yamaha now sniffing up? As now we're back up to number 45. Oh yeah, this is the battle that we were looking at as Cam Peterson on the 45 and Joe Roberts. They were a little closer. Now you can see that Joe Roberts has kind of separated himself back there as they go through lap traffic. And oftentimes in a field like this one, you've got to deal with lap traffic. Oh, it's the 151 now goes off. So the 151 of Josh Fogel out of Chula Vista, California, the Moto Shop machine, he runs straight. No harm, no foul there. The race action continues. And these guys are kind of getting into the, the little bit of back markers that we saw Garrett go through earlier. And uh, as you're looking, Garrett Gerloff's Going down that back straightaway, headed down into turn 10, seven to go, six this time when he comes by. Going through traffic, he was able to gap Valentine to Bees by about 1.3 seconds in one lap. The lap time's now 28.8 for both riders, Gerloff and to Bees, with JD Beach all the way back in the 30.5 range. So, the Yes Graves Yamaha rider, Garrett Gerloff, who rolled this thing out of the truck and it felt right from the beginning. He actually told me that they made a major change to this motorcycle that they don't usually make, Jason. They stiffened up the springs because of how it was reacting on the brakes down the hills. Yeah, and, and it's all about getting that rider comfortable and getting them confident. And when you find one little thing, it can bleed itself all the way around the racetrack. So all of a sudden you get that comfort. And that's what you're seeing. I mean, JD's on the exact same bike as Garrett and JD's just struggling a little bit right now. He's our champion and he's just struggling. But he also realizes the importance of getting those points going on to tomorrow and trying to get his bike a little bit better. Oh, it's the shark fight again that we've been looking at. There's Chum in the water right now as the 34 is trying to hold off. There's Bryce Prince. He goes around Crosland. So now the 74 is on a charge as going on behind him, Xavier Zayat. He has no idea the frenzy. Yeah, this is this is good stuff here. And um, 
I think that in order to, I mean, Crossness has done a great job just staying in this battle with these super stock bikes. And uh, it's just going to go to the end because they're, what they're doing is they're just drafting and redrafting each other down that back straightaway. So the, the one constant, it seems, is Zayat's able to lead this group. So the battle for six, this is the super stock podium. And back up to the battle for fourth with Cam Peterson. He's the number 45. That's that blue and white motorcycle. Suzuki right behind him in yellow and black. That is Joe Roberts. This battle for fourth, this could mean huge, huge things as the championship continues on in the Moto America series. As Roberts looks a little rough under braking, just a little bit. It seems like he's just better in some places and Cam's better in some places and that's kind of how it's working out right now because we see Joe catch up. He's kind of on the back of him now. It just doesn't seem like when he turns his bike, he can't get it down to the apex. Like right there, I've watched him a couple times. He's getting, he's turning. He's trying to get the bike turned, but it doesn't seem like the bike wants to get down to the apex where he wants it. So it's messing up the way he kind of gets through and exits the corner. And you can see that gap that was just pulled. That was all pulled back in the slow corner, turn 11, just because it just doesn't seem like he can get it going where he wants. Now, maybe through some of the faster turns, his bike might work a little bit better for him. Uh, we'll look down through, through the S's. It seems like he was able to hold a little tighter line there through four as they head down this big steep hill. Battle for six continues to rage, and there is Camacho now. So Camacho has made some moves of his own to take over the point from Zayat, Crossland, and Bryce Prince. And all the while, Dakota Mamola on the 80. That's the red motor. Oh, and there was looked like it was almost touched just off the screen as Prince gets around Crossland now. But Mamola's just hanging back there right now, just chilling. He's trying, and I just wonder if he's got the motorcycle under him to get up there, because it seems like he can hang on the back of these guys, but I haven't been able to see him draft or do anything down the back straight. And we know he's riding hard, we know he's trying. So it's just a matter of if, if he's gonna be able to, you know, he's gotta kind of get by Crossland now. As these three find, that's probably the biggest gap we've seen, isn't it, between yeah. in this group. Those first three guys have just gotten away a little bit so we'll see if Crossland can drag Dakota back up into this group as they head onto this big long back straightaway as Crossland has a look over the back of his shoulder there sees Dakota right behind him the draft and pass something this racetrack Road Atlanta is famous for as now Camacho leads the way from the 34 there's Zayat side by side they go through the kink and here they go down into turn 10 who's going to leave it late it's the 91 with the inside line. Can he get the motorcycle slowed down? No, he goes wide and there's the crisscross move and the 34 to the point. You called it, he just went in there a little bit tighter. Just couldn't quite get the bike slowed down and it cost him two places. And you know, JC's been doing an awesome job. It's a, it's a great welcome to see him up at the front because I'm surprised to see where he's at and it's, a, and it's a welcome. So he's been riding great, but now he realizes, hey, I'm racing for the win here. I wanna, I wanna see how deep I can go into turn 10. He showed us, but now he's just got to get the bike slowed down a little bit more because if that was the last lap, he would have finished third. Four to go in this one. The Altus Motorsports Yamaha of J.C. Camacho from Deer Park, Texas, is showing us how it's done. And how about this Texan right now? Garrett Gerloff yeah. leading the way. 28-9, last lap. He's in management mode with the laps winding down. Seven seconds in hand over Valentine de Bees. Not a better feeling, just not a better feeling in the world. And when you're leading a race by this much, you know, kind of a, you know, I used to always think to myself, I want to try to get to the lap tra traffic as quick as I could, just so it would keep my attention. We look back here to Valentine de Bees. He's, do he's done an, uh, an outstanding job. I think traffic didn't quite play into his favor today. He was doing everything he could to continue to put that pressure on him. We'll go back to JD Beach, who's actually 15 seconds behind his teammate right now. So he's going to go back to the drawing board tonight with his crew and try to figure out what is exactly missing on this bike for him so he can come back stronger tomorrow and for the rest of the year. Part of the education of the Super Sport class, without question, more adjustability than Super Stock. You get that opportunity to go back to the drawing board, talk to your crew, and try to make adjustments. The battle for fourth continues to rage on as they go through lap traffic. It is Cameron Peterson from South Africa, now stuck behind the 13 of Melissa Paris, who's out there doing a great job, but it's one line through this section, and when you get lap traffic right here, it could definitely hurt you as Joe Roberts looks like he's thinking about something. It's just so hard. It's just so hard to do anything with anybody as you come down through those S's, because as you say, it is one line, and it's going to be a big move. If it's the last lap, you try to do something a little bit more with somebody, but but uh, Melissa did an awesome job. Hold her, held her line, did her thing. That's what these you two do. guys, these two guys got by, and obviously we've seen Melissa for a lot of years. Great rider, and uh, these two guys were able to slide through after they came out of turn five. Congratulations to Parrish for coming to the table with a new sponsor for this year. 
seven corners. And, but they have done and dusted her as she continues to race her race as we look at this battle for fourth between Peterson and Roberts. And Jason, you've been calling it. It's just been a seesaw battle back and forth. Sometimes Roberts is just on the tailpipe of the 45 of Peterson. And Peterson's able to kind of open it up in some spots. Yeah, now we're going to look down here again. Turn 11. Both these guys on the brakes. Joe's getting his bike turned. And that was a little bit better there. It looked like it was a little nicer. So, you know, it would be interesting. I, I want to go talk to him even after the race and just kind of see what's going on here. Because, uh, like I said, both these guys have done a great job. Cam's on a new bike, new team, new everything. So <laughs> it's a little adjustability for him. Not only is Cam on a new bike, new team, he's actually on a new bike. Yes. This bike was completely rebuilt. Not even rebuilt. They built it from parts in the truck. And Peterson's first go at it is right now. Gerloff, your race leader. Less than two laps to go. We, in racing, when we get a white flag, that indicates the final lap. As Garrett Gerloff has had his way from the beginning, he didn't get the race jump. That was his teammate, J.D. Beach. He had to make a pass for the lead. And then he started to dictate the pace as Garrett Gerloff, 29 flat, last go around. He's into turn 10A, 10B, up and over the crest of the hill, turn 11. He'll come shooting down this very steep hill, hard on the binders for turn number 12 to take the white flag, the final lap for this one. Yeah, this is a great feeling for him, and he's got three back markers up ahead of him, as you can see, all super stock guys battling for position. So he doesn't have to go by any of them. He, if, he, if he can draft them maybe down the back straightaway, make clean pass, it's gonna be what he'll do. As we look back to second place here, DeBees, again, doing a great job, headed off into turn one. Extending the lead is Gerloff to 10 seconds now. So it's 10 seconds to DeBees and then another 7.6 back to J.D. Beach. So 17.7 seconds back is J.D. Beach. But he looks like he's got third place all wrapped up. A lot of education now as this battle raging back there with the Superstock 600 riders as now the race leader comes up on this battle. And you can see the drive that Garrett Gerloff will get out of the corner and how fast these super sport machines are as they come on the back straightaway is the perfect time to get these rides. And what's, what's bad for these guys is that this is going to be their last lap. They don't know it. They're, yeah. they're waiting for the white flag lap and they're not going to get it because Garrett's going to go by all of them. If not, uh, is he going to get by him? Yep, he does. He gets by all of them. So now this battle between these guys is literally a battle to the, to the flag. Dion Campbell and the 96 there of Jason Aguilar. He makes the move. Aguilar knowing, whoop, I, I'm out of a lap. I got to go make the move. So Garrett Gerloff now up and over the hill. There he goes down into turn number 12. One more corner to negotiate as he gets on the gas and head towards the checkered flag, a stand-up wheelie for number 31, Garrett Gerloff on his YES Graves Yamaha. And I saw a yellow flag waving down there in the last turn as he came to the checkered flag, but Garrett Gerloff, what an awesome job. Valentine, awesome job. He's gonna be happy with that, finishing second today. A big win, yeah, morally, for the M4 SportBikeTrackGear.com Suzuki as they get second place as he splits those Graves Yamahas in half and is able to put himself second on the box. Big moral victory, and we know that that team's gonna go back to the drawing board to find out. Now here's that battle for fourth, as now Cam Peterson is able to hold off Joe Roberts for that fourth spot. A great effort by the 27 to keep the 45 in sight. And Cam Peterson, brand new forks, new shock, new frame, new tank, new everything. He did a sighting lap, a warm up lap, and was able to do this. Now, how about this battle, Jason? Here we go. There it is. He's the 91. crossed over again by Bryce Prince. Oh, and Prince makes that move, and here they come down the hill. Oh, no, oh, oh, into the weeds. Oh, Can he get the bike oh, slowed down? Wow. What? Oh, did he Whoa. save it? If he saved that, that's amazing. Boy, was he lucky there. It looks like ran it off he into ran the off, litter. He, he ran off the track, and boy, that is just such a shame oh, for him. He rode so well wow. all day long. That's okay, JC. You're going to come back stronger tomorrow, kid. And Woo. But you know what? For him to save that and not take Bryce out, congrats to Bryce Prince. What a move. Dakota Mamola moves up into second in that class, and it looks like JC still gets that podium. We lost one of the guys. I think we lost Xavier Zayat we did. the lap prior to that. But you can see this. He gets, he tries to run down the outside, and right here, he realizes, I'm going to run in the grass. Wow. Now, he's worried about hitting Bryce. He locks up both wheels. Look at that. Gets it saved. Looks oh. like he's getting ready to crash there. Runs off into the gravel. 
That's too much excitement for him probably at this point. <laughs> and now he's just trying to get himself back onto the track. Now, he's going to come around and still get on the podium today, which is what he deserves, it looks like. So congrats to him anyways. JC Camacho, what a save. But how about this rider? Garrett Gerloff averaged 103.5 miles per hour. <laughs> oh, look at this rider. He is in a lot of pain. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. What a save. Your heart's got to be beaten. I, I mean, I can't even tell you. We've all in racing had some type of save, some type of incidents like that. But to do it on a big stage like this, right here on BN Sports, that is an incredible save, and it showed a great bit of control that J.C. Camacho had on that motorcycle. And Overall, he finishes ninth. And I'm not positive I know it hurts, but I think I know it hurts. Yeah, I think, I, I think we all know it hurts. <laughs> well, we're going to get this whole thing sorted out when we come back. So stay with us. We'll be back after the break. Good racing. It's the Suzuki Superbike Shootout of Georgia and the Super Sport Super Stock 600 race in the books. We saw domination by Garrett Gerloff, an incredible save on the last corner of the last lap, and a great battle for the Super Stock podium. You can see the middle part of your screen of that graphic. In sixth place is Bryce Prince in Super Stock. To put him a mullet, Christian Croslin actually is going to be in the Super Sport class. We're going to get to the bottom of that. We think that he had to do a bike swap and a class change at the last minute. So looking on back, Connor Blevins and Gage McAllister in there as well. Gabe Miller in 18th spot in the Super Stock class. So Jason, I mean, looking at these race results right now, there's a lot on the line, isn't there? Because in the Super Stock 600 class, if you finish top 15 in the points after this weekend, you actually get to go into group number one. Yeah, it makes it easier for those guys next week to be able to just go right to group one, a little bit faster group. All right, so here's a look at the points as Garrett Gerloff now leads the way over Valentine DeBees, J.D. Beach, Joe Robert, and Cam Peterson as well. So points massively important. Now, let's go down to victory lane with Christy Lee. J.D. Beach, third place finish. Obviously not the result you're looking for. It was exactly what you weren't expecting. Garrett Gerloff got away from you, but what a save and what a race. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, the team and I were, de were definitely hoping for some more, and we're not in, and we're definitely not settled with third. We're not too uh, excited about that. I mean, it, it is a podium, but we want to be uh, up up there fighting for wins, and uh, we definitely, or I definitely made a huge mistake uh, about the, thir the third lap or so, and uh, we just got to go back to the drawing board tonight. We got a new uh, new day tomorrow, and uh, we de we definitely want to get get some race wins. So uh, it's a new day tomorrow, and we'll see what happens. Guys, all right, yep. I mean, he obviously you know, yeah, he knows it, and so they're going to definitely download the data both in his brain and off the motorcycle and see what kind of adjustments that they can make. Beautiful day here at Road Atlanta. Incredible race action as we saw Garrett Gerloff really show us how it's done around this two and a half mile racetrack, undulating racetrack. And let's go back down to Christy, who has second place. Our second place finisher, Valentine DeVise. Great race. That was a barn burner. We couldn't stop watching. Ladies what an outstanding performance. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. The ice was, uh, was not so easy, but uh, I tried, I tried to catch uh, Gerloff. Uh, so I pushed everything Camacho. at the beginning. I want to stay with him. But it, it, it was really it's fast, so Yamaha's impossible to cut. But anyway, I'm really happy, so I want to say thank you to and everybody for that. Alex Valentine, congrats on second. All right, so there you go, putting it right between those two YES Graves Yamahas. That's an outstanding job, really, and it was just, like I said, it was just a little bit of traffic that kind of, it's really hard, Greg, when you're pushing and you're pushing and you're pushing, and then you get a little bit of bad luck because you just know it's going to be very difficult to make that And it was bad again. luck for Valentine. Yeah, I mean, he was. is an FIM World Endurance racer. He knows traffic. Back down to Christy. Third Garrett, some then. struggles Goes at the beginning of the Jesse race, Camacho. but obviously getting a strong lead towards the end of the race. Congratulations, first place finish. It looks like focusing Second and staying relaxed really paid off for you. Yeah, for sure. Manila. I mean, I uh, just felt like I was trying to do consistent laps and made a few mistakes there in the beginning, and, uh, and you know, the, lap the, wasn't, uh, the gap wasn't getting any bigger, team. but really happy with the result. Uh, the team's been working really team. hard, and, and I've been working really team. hard, too. And uh, to and see it all, all paying off is, is uh, 
definitely giving me more confidence, and I just want to keep, keep riding the wave, I guess, you know? Uh, so I, I can't thank my whole Yamaha Extended Service, Monster Energy, Graves, Yamaha team enough, um, Keaton, Ollie, Thanks, and man. everybody on the team. They've been a huge help over the offseason and, and through the season. Um, Scott Bicycles, they're out here uh, <laughs> with, uh, yeah. with their stuff, doing demo rides, and uh, that's, you know, what I train on back home. Um, All right, uh, Cortec so Leathers, three, Showy yeah. Helmets, wow. uh, CD Boots, everything. So just uh, I really appreciate it. Big win for the Yamaha Extended Service team and Garrett Gerloff. All right, congratulations to Garrett Gerloff. And here's some highlights from the race that we just witnessed. Oh, J.D. Beach going sideways. Big moment. J.D. Beach able to get her back up. And then this was the race for the Super Stock 600, as we saw in Rage on all race long, as Calvin Crossland on that white 66 was involved with this battle as well. But this would have been the race for the podium as the 34 and 91 went after it, and the 91 of JC Camacho, he got past there on the last lap and coming down the hill, it was nothing but dicey going off track, riding is a big save. And wow, we're gonna have to talk to that rider and get his comments for tomorrow. Well, that's it from Moto America on this day. We have more tomorrow, you wanna check that out? For Jason and for Christy, I'm Greg, thanks for joining us. The Super Sport, Super Stock 600 race, and of course, that Superbike, Super Pole qualifying. We hope you enjoyed the racing from Road Atlanta. We will see you tomorrow right here on BN Sports. Have a great evening.